Hello, welcome to The Well After Hours. I'm Beverly Allen, and I'm so glad you're joining our conversation today. We have great topic, great guest. To my right, we have three amazing women who are going to address the topic of single women in ministry and dating. Yes, we're going there, and they're going to help get us there. And so get a friend, go knock on a neighbor's door, but join in our conversation because it's going to be great. Ladies, welcome to the Well After Hours. Thank you for taking the time out to be here with us. I so appreciate your coming and uh, being courageous enough to deal with this subject <laughs> and help our viewing audience be strengthened as well. So welcome. And um, so I guess we might as well dive right in. Tell me this single life. Tell me what it's like. First of all, look into the camera and introduce yourselves to the viewing audience briefly so they'll know who they're hearing from today. <laughs> okay. I am Reverend Deborah Pierce. Call me Debbie. I am associate pastor at Ponds Reformed Church in Oakland, New Jersey. Um, and God is doing amazing things there. So check us out. <laughs> My name is Pastor Nicole B. Simpson, and I am the senior pastor of Micah 7 Ministries in Piscataway, New Jersey. It is a church plant. We're going on our fourth year, and we would love to see you at any given Sunday. Hi, my name is Alejandra Caballero. I am the associate pastor of First Baptist Church of New Brunswick. This is a church that is bilingual, English and Spanish. And I am also an ordained ministry from American Baptist Churches of New, Brun of New Jersey. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, listen, after announcing what you all do, I see you have pretty busy schedules. And we're talking about dating. Is there room in your schedule for dating? <laughs> we have to make room. <laughs> Ministry is, is more than a full-time job, even for those of us that may be part-time. Um, but dating is, is self-care for us. So we have to make time for that, I think. Well, I, um, I personally do not date. I tell other individuals that um, because uh, I simply believe he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor for the Lord. So I am going to continue to do the work of ministry and uh, prayerfully he'll find me. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's my goal, my objective in life. Uh, but I do think that um, when that time comes for someone significant, to which I, I feel as if I'm preparing myself, that um, I will make the time for that individual to date. Mm -hmm. I think that because it, it is important for my life, I have to make the time to date, for, uh, to have a date with someone. So uh, yes, there, there has to be a time. Time is um, what we make out of it. Very good. Yeah, well, that sounds really good for anybody who's out there watching. Because so many times, you know, um, people don't understand that how important and how involved ministry is. I mean, as a pastor, as assistant pastor, as administrative pastor, all the things that, that you know, come along with the, with the vocation. And having said that, then I would also ask, what level of spirituality would a person have to be in order to understand that, to <laughs> each of you? <laughs> uh, there definitely has to be a significant level, I think, for me um, personally. I've seen relationships where it's been not so equal and they're much tougher, but I think because of what we do, um, we need somebody who understands what ministry is. And, and because of that, um, also I need that connection of somebody who knows God deeply and cares for God's people deeply as well, just on a personal level, Amen. I need that. I, I observe it differently. Um, I think what is very important is their ability to pray for me. You know, um, I, I need someone that, um, as I have a ministry, not only as a senior pastor, but a lot of what I do is centered or rooted in trauma. And so I need someone that can take care of me as I take care of the charge that God has over my life uh, and the people that I work with. And so even in my basic observation of um, who it is that I spend time with, it is essential for me to hear someone pray because it shows me the level of uh, comfortability that they have in talking to God. Um, do they have to be a pastor or a deacon or an elder or something of that nature? I have not limited uh, what it is that God has for me, um, but I do know that they need to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and that I think we can find out through prayer. 
Yeah, totally agree. Someone who is very committed to God, who knows, who has that relationship with God. And, and Nicole, you mentioned something that is very visual. You heard, you can hear yeah. how he talks, how he, how he behaves yeah. in prayer. And I, that's something that I would like to see in that person, the level of spirituality that is someone who has a relationship with God, who, who works with the congregation, with the church, who loves Uh, not just God, but also lost people. Yeah. So see that respect for one another is something that I would like to see in, in, in someone that I would like to date. Mm. Would you say that that person would also have to have leadership ability? And by that, I mean, you lead in the church, but mm -hmm. what about leading at home? Do you feel like you have to lead at home too? Or do you want somebody who can lead in the That's part of your life. It's, okay. oh, I'm sorry, Alejandra. <laughs> See, I think that's that's what's important because you know, oftentimes that people will presume that because I'm a pastor, I want to be with another pastor or something mm -hmm. of that nature. But if you're a leader in organization, or if you're a leader in corporate America, or if you're a leader in society at large, or a political leader, or anything of that nature, then there's some skill sets that you have that shows mm -hmm. that you can still be leadership in the home, mm -hmm. and that. Um, I think because we operate in a leadership position in the church, people think that automatically a woman pastor or a preacher does not know how to revere or respect or honor the person that they're with in relationship. And I just think that that's um, a disservice to individuals. It may be uh, overwhelming for the gentleman that might be considering dating someone um, that is single, but it also is um, a presumption that we want to lead in the house. And no, we want someone to be in partnership or in conversation with as well regarding decisions in our lives. That's a mm -hmm. very good point. Yes, I think that um, as as Nicole mentioned, someone that will that will be we complement each other yes. and Again, I go back to the Bible, to, to Genesis 1, where, where God, when God created man and woman, and God made each one of them to have a specific role in, in family. I truly believe that for, that's, that's for us. And leadership in the church doesn't mean that you have to be the one in leadership in everything. I think that each Each one of us has different gifts in different areas, and and I'm not looking for some for someone who be a leader specifically specifically for something, but I am looking for someone who 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 believes in himself, who has that uh, assurance of who he knows who he is. Oh, very good. Point. Yes. Very good point. Very good point. Wow. Well, having said that, that's kind of what they look like. How do you get to meet people? What I mean, where is the kind of source that you can draw from? I mean, do your colleagues, your male colleagues, uh, ever say, hey, you know, I know this uh, person who's in ministry, may not be a pastor, but he could be some involvement in ministry, maybe an administrative pastor or something, you know, in the church or... Uh, as you said, he doesn't necessarily have to be a deacon or anything like that. But, you know, you look around, people, the, the, just the regular lay person is right. looking and they're having <laughs> tough times. So what do you do? Because your position or vocation can be so intimidating, Yeah, you know, oftentimes. Uh, well, so I, to I the average, to the <laughs> average, to the average like, man, oh my gosh, yeah. she's and, 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 and there are great average right. men. I mean, to the everyday working person. Uh, person, you know. So, so I, um, we all went to seminary together. So we are, uh, you know, we went to New Brunswick Theological Seminary together, and uh, you know, we have a, we, we, we actually have an amazing uh, class, and so we have um, some awesome men and women in our class. And I remember, you know, just being in a place where. I wanted to be intentional about being married again after coming out of 25 years of being single for about six years. And so, like, I'm ready to be a wife. This singleness is um, not where I'm the best me. I'm efficient, thank you, Jesus, but not the best me. <laughs> so I started asking a few of my friends who I know, love, and trust, uh, you know, um, what do you think about asking, you know, your male friends that know you, uh, you know, how... Uh, uh, you know, um, 
um, if they had somebody, would they consider connecting you with that individual since they know you, they know you best? Um, and I asked the same thing about online dating. Like, is that a thing? Because after 25 years, the rules have changed. And so if you don't know the rules, what do you do? And so one of the things that I indicated was that it got such a tepid response that I was like, okay, nope, I'm gonna sit back, let him find me and do whatever. And so I never did anything, but I'm curious to know, is that a okay thing? Because I don't have the answer to it either. <laughs> um, so for me, I actually have, I have gone to all my friends and, okay. as well and said, you know, keep me in mind, <laughs> please, keep me in mind when you're meeting your friends, you know. Um, I have done the online dating thing. Really? Off and on for quite a while. Yeah, it, it's not been real successful for okay. me either. Okay. Um, I do find but, that once these guys find out what I do, they run away. They are intimidated by the fact that I'm a minister. So, uh, so online has not worked out so well. I understand. So, so yeah, right now it's just telling my friends, anybody who I meet, you know somebody, keep me in mind. So we're in the billboard. <laughs> I think that for me, it's been a little, it's been different because I, I have been an introvert. I am still an introvert. Mm. I am a recovering introvert. <laughs> So it's, it's even hard to, to to say to a friend, can you introduce me to some single friends? I do have a, my pastor who's interested in me getting married, oh. intro, it, tell, telling me about people. Uh, but I, I think I find it very difficult, even that. I haven't done the online dating, and I think that the the way... We live right now. That's the way that people are going. Right. The online online da dating, or the old style meeting people in different places is kind of harder. It's getting harder and harder. Yes. So, for me, I would be more intentional in meeting people in different places, in um, in network events, and that would be. And my way of, of going, maybe I'll try online. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know I, it, it, it's so funny you say that. Like the whole, I, I, you know, I'm telling on myself, I can't believe I'm doing that. But, uh, you know, I explored it and for like 10 hours and I was like, oh, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I, it was just so weird for me to even consider having, um, you know, my information there and or available or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm going to trust in what I believe the word of God says. Um, but for somebody that has been committed for such a long time, one of the things that um, kept coming back to me, and I don't know if you guys have this as well, is that people assume I'm already married because oh, of where yes. it is that I am yes. in my life. And you know, um, I guess how it is that I present myself. And so I'm like, uh, you know, I, I was joking about the billboard, but like, how do you say, no, I'm not. Like, right. you know, <laughs> come say hello or whatever. And that, I think, when women are together, mm -hmm. when they're in leadership, when they find themselves in a position where they're in um, positions of authority, there's a natural presumption that they're already committed. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it, it doesn't make you approachable. And I have not figured out how to combat that. Mm -hmm. Me either. Wow. It's so true. It's so true. I've experienced the same thing. They assume that I am in a relationship right. at, because of my age and, and my level of authority and that I'm not looking. And that's really tough. It is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And 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 people think that just re everyday single women have it have it tough. You know, they look <laughs> at at the pastor sometime or the the minister in the pulpit. It is as you say, almost like an exalted position. They feel that you know, uh, you have a, a in road with the Lord <laughs> that that protects you or keeps you. In a sense, I guess you do. But the closer they get to the Lord, I know they feel the same thing. But it's it's very hard because they feel like, oh, you're you're okay. You're you're Okay, you can yeah, manage right, it right, well, right, right. you know, you're different mm -hmm. from them, yes. but they don't understand that, you know, when you step out that pulpit, <laughs> you know, that's your calling. God calls you to do that. But when you come out, you're living the same everyday life, going through the same everyday right. emotions that they go through. And having said that, how do you minister to some of the single women in your church who are, um, 
kind of compromising, Norman and Stanley getting tired instead of looking for Mr. Good, they're looking for Mr. Good enough, <laughs> you know, or just enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what I tell them and tell myself, I remind myself in, in this conversation, is to make sure I surround myself with good friends. I make sure I'm, I'm give a level of transparency to them and let them know, you know, I have those sleepless nights or those nights where I've cried myself to sleep because I'm lonely, Thanks. you know, and have those, those times and it's okay for them to have too. But what really keeps me going is having that circle of friends, that accountability to be together, to remind me, don't settle for Mr. Good enough. Make sure you keep looking for who God has called to be my partner. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, and I think one of my protection mechanisms is the fact that I do not date. Um, you know, it probably has saved or spared me um, in some regards. But I have had, based off of history and the people that I trust, um, I have had the um, saying that I've given too much of myself and not received enough back in, you know, those that I have been, uh, you know, um, interested in or them interested in me. And so I've had to put up literally a guard mm -hmm. of individuals that says you deserve better, you deserve more. Mm -hmm. As much as we know how to value uh, every aspect of our lives in what it is that I do, uh, you know, in ministry and life overall, there are some areas, and mine happens to be in the area of relationship, mm -hmm. where I may not see myself as valuable as even those that love me, that, um, you know, that I trust. And so they have literally been been my guardrail in mm -hmm. this period of time as I want to be intentional about being married. Mm -hmm. Yes, so <laughs> I am a youth pastor in my church also, so I do have many single, single young girls who are interested in relationships. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I try to do at, as a pastor is first be an example to them. I am not perfect, right. mm -hmm. but I try my best to for them to look at me and, and know that I am single, but that doesn't mean that I have to, I also have to keep boundaries, be, be, um, be value, value myself. So I want them to, I, that's what I want for them. I want them to be caring for themselves being in relationship with God in before going into any relationships that they know that they have to value themselves first before going that other steps of a relationship, boyfriends or marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I, what I do. I think that's great. And that, that whole message of accountability is so important um, for any a woman. You know, I think that some, there's a group or a friendship that you allow yourself to be accountable to right. someone that you can trust, someone that keeps confidentiality, no judgment, no condemnation, because there's therefore now no condemnation to them. Right. Or in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus, he's not called us to condemn, but right. to always be on the alert for reconciliation because right. the enemy is always trying to use every opportunity to pull someone out of the faith. And yes. sometimes because people aren't perfect, because things do fall, that um, they feel like, oh, why bother? Right. But you know, you have to pick up the pieces and keep going, you know, and mm -hmm. thank God that he's, his grace is sufficient. But, you know, and I think that's a message of trying to get to so many women because they've given up. I mean, like hope, they, they, they love the Lord, they come to church and they participate, but they go home and they feel defeated. Sometimes there's someone there with them. But how, what can you address or say um, to the single um woman who uh, may be a lay member at any of our churches and is looking for a word, you know, of encouragement. Your lives do encourage them and they are impactful because as you go through, people will imitate even how you handle it. It gives them the courage to go through. Mm -hmm. So uh, what could you say to them? to them. I want you to look into the camera and kind of, you know, say, give a, give a word of encouragement to the single uh, women who are out there. Okay. I would just like to remind you um, to truly find that circle of friends that you can be honest with and will be honest with you. Um, Jesus did, Paul did, we see it through scripture. We've done it. Uh, you've heard us talk about that today. Right. So make sure you find that circle of friends. They'll keep you going. 
I, I want to encourage individuals to focus on taking care of you. Uh, do not wait around for someone else to do for you what it is that you can do for yourself. And I am of the belief that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor in the Lord. And so recognize that you are the favor. And so there is a standard that someone should be able to meet in order to be granted the favor for their own lives. Yes. For those single women, I can I want to tell you that God loves you and the scripture is very clear about that. And I find also in Ephesians that the apostle Paul says that the husband has to love their wife as Christ loved the church. So that's something that we see how Jesus Christ cherished the church, the church, loved the church, did everything, died for the church, died for each one of us. So that tells me that God has a lot of value for each one of us. So you are very valuable to God. And because of that, you, you need to be with someone who truly values for who you are and find that person knowing that God loves you and you will need to find someone who loves you, who really cares for you. Find that person that is true, honest, and, and committed to, to God. Wow. On that note, I want to thank you, ladies. You have just blessed us so much today, and I'm sure you've encouraged a lot of our viewers. And I want to thank you all for joining us at the Well After Hours. Please remember, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m., Facebook and on YouTube. Please go there and like us and meet us and get your friends and everybody to join in and come meet us again at the Well After Hours. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>